Hello everyone. All right. So, starting my spiritual alphabet again. And um, if you don't know what that is, you can go to my YouTube channel and search spiritual alphabet and you'll get my introduction to what this is this project's all about. Um, but very simply, I am going through the alphabet <laughs> A to Z and with each letter I am um, reflecting on a virtue or value, you might say, principle, uh, spiritual practice that is connected to that letter and, and then kind of reflecting and practicing throughout the whole week on it and then talking about how that went for me. So this past week, I have been practicing uh, the principle of awareness. And as always with these videos, I very much welcome you to reflect on whatever it is that I've, I'm saying as regards to your own context, your own spiritual worldview, um, your own like priorities basically as applied to a principle. And so my question for you is, what does awareness mean to you? If you were to spend a week practicing awareness, what would you do? What would you be doing? Now, one of the things about the spiritual alphabet is it's got to be practical for day-to-day -day life. Like, I'm not going off to some literal monastery and having, you know, the meals fed to me and, well, I don't know how monasteries work. Maybe we have to help with the cooking and cleaning and everything. But I'm still here in my regular life doing my regular work, my daily chores. Basically, whatever spiritual principles I am activating has to be relevant for normal Householder life. So, again, my question for you: You can you're welcome to pause this video and reflect on this. Add a comment below if you so wish. I always enjoy seeing what your reflections are. But what does awareness? Is it important to you? First of all, maybe it's not, and if so, you can skip this video. If it is important to you, what does it mean? And how would you practice it? And have you, do you have any examples uh, from your life of when awareness has been important to you? And how do you practice it again? So with that, go ahead, pause the video if you want, reflect on this, unpause the video when you're ready. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you what my thoughts are and my experience has been about awareness. So. Awareness, I'm, I'm glad to begin the spiritual alphabet with this letter because to me, it's, the, um, it's, it's an important foundational practice for spiritual awakening or spiritual growth. Uh, living life consciously means we have to be aware in order to make choices. If we are not aware, it means we are um, so embedded in our this video game called life, this movie called life, that we are just going along, not um, making conscious decisions. And so we're going on past conditioning, you know, all of our habitual patterns and programming that has been you know, done unto us by ourselves, by our parents, by our society, by the, by the people around us and the environment around us, has shaped us into particular habitual ways of thinking and acting and speaking. And most of us, you know, life is not easy. So most of us just cope throughout the day uh, with whatever needs to be done. And the coping is often 
again, based on old patterns of feeling okay, you know, trying to, trying to make things okay in our lives. And so awareness hardly comes into the picture because we're just getting by. Um, or we're reacting to whatever's happening or just has, has happened. So awareness is the beginning of choice. I, I love the uh, teaching from Viktor Frankl from Man's Search for Meaning. He was a Holocaust survivor who noticed, well, first of all, being a Holocaust survivor is extraordinary when most people did not, could not, of course, I mean, I don't know, the, some people had no choice, obviously, but he survived where others probably could have if they had taken more choices because this is what he said he said the the gap between stimulus and response is choice i'm paraphrasing here and that choice requires awareness if we're not aware between the stimulus of the outside world something happening to us someone saying something to us um and our immediate response if there's no gap for awareness, then there's no choice. We just go by whatever is natural for us at the moment, which often isn't the best of us, which certainly isn't our potential for who we could become. So that gap and the um, pausing and activation of that gap to me is awareness and in and once we become aware we have many more choices than when we were not aware when you're not aware you don't really have choice you're just going along with your continued pattern but when you are aware then you say i can go left or i can go right or I can stop where I am, or I can go forward, or I can go backward. I have many choices around me. I can f continue thinking this thought, or I can perhaps take some breaths, try to clear my mind, or try to bring another thought in, or to imagine a um, something that is going to inspire me, right? Instead of continuing on this thing that's bringing me down. Emotions are difficult to become, well, first of all, become aware of. I think a lot of, for a lot of people, it's difficult to even just be aware of emotions, let alone choose emotions, right? Like, awareness is the first choice. How am I feeling right now? Can I describe it? Am I, do I understand what the tone and the color and the source, perhaps, of these feelings are? Am I aware? Remember the, the age-old saying, right? Know thyself, one of the most important <laughs> sayings of all of humanity. Know thyself. Awareness. Awareness. Now, so awareness can be either sort of a bigger picture thing of I am aware of how my patterns work. And that's wonderful. I am talking about aware yes that's true and, and and yet i think that's the the bigger project all of us are doing is getting to know ourselves better and how we can better uh, fulfill our potential in this world in this life what i'm more interested in and what i've been practicing is awareness moment by moment okay so let me start talking about what i actually did this week all right as i went through my day when I began my day, I set the intention to pause and reflect even for a moment, the moment meaning literally a few seconds, pause and reflect two times every hour at least. Now, um, this, is, this is a bit easier during my working day because if I'm just working and I'm often working with a timer uh, because that's how I do my productivity practice throughout my working day. I work with a 10 to 15 minute timer. 
And so when the timer goes off, it's easier for me to take a, take a breath and become aware again of what my choices are in the moment for my thoughts, my actions, my speech, uh, my, my physical posture, right? my way of being. And so during the working day is a, a bit easier. It's harder when I'm on break from work because when I'm on break, when I'm having lunch or um, with, you know, with friends or family or something, I'm not using a timer. <laughs> that would be a little odd. <laughs> and so it's easier to just kind of like go for half an hour, an hour, two, three hours, you know, during the family time, personal time, like during breaks. It's harder to become aware twice an hour and make a more conscious choice for, for what I'm doing at the moment. However, um, so uh, let, me, let me tell you the, the practical way that I, that I was tracking this. I um, started a, I use an app called Google Keep. Google Keep, it's free. You can use it too. It's uh, um, it's a it's a mobile app. It's also a, a a web page. You can use either version. It's all synced together, and Google Keep has the ability to create like you you start a note in Google Keep. You start a you start a note there, and then you can turn on check boxes, check boxes. And instead of bullet points, it could just be check boxes, and you can write something, and you can you can write a bunch of things, and they all have check boxes. You can check things off. So what I did was. <clears throat> I wrote um, 757, 827, 857, 927, 957. So I made a bunch of um, lists. I made a list of times at seven, <laughs> you know, the hour, seven, you know, seven hours after midnight, 57 minutes into the seventh hour, etc. So I was setting the intention to check in with awareness at the 27 and 57 mark of every hour. And so I made that list in Google Keep. Uh, starting from, again, 7.57. It's, I, I usually wake up around 6, 6.30, but I figured I would start my awareness practice at just, just, just before I started work around 8 o'clock, right? So 7.57, 8.27, 8.57, 7.00. And the checkboxes are nice because throughout the day, as I come back to awareness, I kind of reward myself for a second by checking that box off. Ah, 827, I was aware. I was, took a breath, I did my energy reboot, I made a more conscious choice for how I'm going to spend the next moment. Because, you know, how, how our brains are, we almost forget within a minute or half a minute that we're supposed to be practicing spirituality or, or whatever it is. We're just on with our pattern or whatever we're doing. But at least twice a, twice an hour or more, I would become aware. I would check that box if it's one, a 27 or 57 mark. And then the nice thing about Google Keep is at the start of the next day, I can simply click on the three dots and say, uncheck all boxes. And so I start fresh with un, unchecked boxes for, for the next day with just a few clicks. And, and then I start over. And then what I noticed is that at the, um, at the start of the next day, before I click uncheck all boxes and instantly, I noticed which boxes from the previous day, essentially, were unchecked. For example, I noticed that when I start my lunch, you know, I'm I, you know, around uh, 11... Uh, 11.30 or so, I start my lunch, and then I have lunch, I take a nap, like those times are often unchecked, those half hour chunks are often unchecked, because I'm, I'm excited to begin lunch, I guess, and, you know, excited to take a break, and, and rest, and everything, and, and naturally, those boxes are, are unchecked, and I'm like, you know, that, that, this has been true for days and days now, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm always, I'm always having my break time unaware. And I guess that's okay. But then I realized that, okay, I don't have to be so vigilant during my time off, so-called. Which makes me think, do we really ever get time off from, should we ever give ourselves time off from awareness? <laughs> right? Sure, when you're sleeping, right? When you're taking a nap, okay? 
when you're unconscious, obviously, we're unaware and we can't make choices. Well, some people can lucid dream, but I, I can't. I can't make choices when I'm sleeping. And But, but during the, our off time, so-called off times, should we be giving ourselves time off from spiritual practice? One of my... Uh, one of the mantras I've worked with for many years is uh, practice without ceasing. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, practice without ceasing. And ever resting also. Like there's a sense that, you know, we are, I believe that we made a big choice, right? A very important choice to come into this life, to incarnate into this life, into this body, for a limited time, who knows, 50 years, 80 years, 120 years, whatever. And this is such a precious time, a precious opportunity to play this earth game. And compared to the eternity of our souls, after this life is ended, our bodies so-called die and our spirits are liberated, we have essentially unlimited time. There is no time in the other realm. We can spend as long as we want to looking at a flower or making some art or hanging out with some other souls or whatever, resting, okay, just healing. We spend as much time as we want to. And yet here in this limited earth life and time, we've given ourselves very precious 80 years. I know it seems long when you're in it, but as we keep going, we realize how short it was. Anyway, I'm like, so years and years ago, I started saying to myself, practice without ceasing and yet ever resting. Meaning, uh, even though a practice sounds like an effortful thing, there is an underlying thread of peace and deep relaxation, knowing that all is well and that I'm simply practicing this game here. Um, for the benefit of my soul and for the hopefully benefit of others. And anyway, so, so, um, so this is why I'm like, okay, unless I'm unconscious and asleep, I would like to be aware because I am not unconscious, <laughs> right? Even that term, I am not unconscious right now. I am conscious, okay? You know, kind of playing on that word. I am physically conscious, yes, but am I spiritually conscious? I am conscious, but am I living consciously? Now, I've heard of someone, I don't remember, I wish I, I wish I'd recall who this was, but someone, I think it was on YouTube, years ago I saw this, and I, again, I, someone who knows, please comment below if you find this person. But this person said, that they were going to embark on something like a hundred days of remembering God every minute of every waking hour. Now, this person, I think, I I would think this person was a Christian, so that's why they said, you know, remembering God. We could take that to whatever our worldview is and say, uh, practicing awareness every minute of every day. But this this is this person's challenge to to himself was to practice remembering God every minute of every waking hour. Meaning, like, he would check in at least once a minute to, like, remember God. And, okay, I'll tell you, it is challenging enough to remember two times an hour. <laughs> I would promise you, I've been practicing all week long. My God, I mean, I, I can't imagine... Remembering every minute, I mean, just how many minutes have gone by since I started this video? I'm supposed to, like, to check in with God every... That's probably in my... Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as superhuman as this person maybe was. But that's too interruptive, right? Like, it's, it's, it's too... Yeah, it's too interruptive. Like, you're, you're just trying to get through your day and there's so much you have to pay attention to and, and, and just be in a pattern. I know, be autopilot on there's certain things. But just like to, to like interrupt yourself every minute is seems kind of mentally exhausting. So, but once an hour, I find it's, it's great. I mean, gosh, if you can do awareness practice once an hour, 
you're more you're living more consciously than I imagine probably the vast majority of the history of humanity. And so I think once an hour is probably a very good start. I mean, most people who do spiritual practice, they do it in the morning. <laughs> they just do it once a day. Right? Once a day. And some people are very disciplined and they do it once in the morning and then once in the evening. It's some kind of spiritual practice. And then, you know, we have Muslims who are amazingly disciplined, those who, who do this kind of practice, and they pray five times a day with, with, with a prayer rug and facing Mecca. Five times a day. I think it's an amazing discipline. It's a wonderful discipline, right? I often think, wow, if I imagine growing up in that culture where you have that discipline built into the entire culture, like to be spiritually aware five times a day is amazing. Really, I think it's what a blessing. Five times a day. So that's um, approximately every four. Well, I guess, I don't think they do it at night. I, I, don't, I, I'm not, I don't know. M Muslims, please comment below. But I guess, let's say you are awake for 16 hours a day. So that's like every three hours, three to four hours, you're, you're, being, you're doing this particular spiritual practice. Amazing. So that's every three hours, four hours. So that's been instituted into a religion and a culture for thousands of years, I, I, I think, right? So then taking that up a notch to once an hour is you're definitely among the few, you know, maybe 0.1% of humanity or something like that, that does that. So I think even just once an hour, and that's, a, that's, that's maybe, I think, okay, I'll just say, that's probably <laughs> more sane for most, most of us here. Once an hour, it makes sense. Like, okay, it's 8.30 have I done my spiritual practice this hour? If not, let me go ahead and do that now. Taking a few deep breaths. Okay, so let me, let me talk about what to do during awareness practice. Once, once again, I encourage you to pause the video if you like, to reflect on that for yourself first. What would inspire you? What would really be nourishing for you throughout the day to do during your awareness practice. You get to make it up. I mean, unless you have a particular religion that says you have to do this or do that, it's up to you. If you don't, then you get to decide, create what seems right for you, what seems inspiring, nourishing, enlivening for you. And you, may, you, you might change this. I mean, I, right? you're welcome to change your awareness practice as you keep going and discover um, what doesn't work? What's not sustainable? What would you like to bring in? And you can also do, be dynamic. Maybe, maybe every odd hour you do this awareness practice. Every even hour you do a different practice. I don't know. Or maybe you have like three different practices. You just rotate among the three. Be as you would when you are most, when you are connected to your divine source, your higher self. So what is your awareness practice? You can let me know below if you like. Mine, well, very simple. It's my energy reboot. <laughs> of course, of course it is. Those who don't know what my energy reboot is, you can go to my YouTube channel and search. Well, you can Google it, actually. Energy reboot. Google knows my energy reboot. So you can Google energy reboot and click on my article or watch my video about it. So that's what I do during my twice an hour awareness practice. And like I said, twice an hour is, is hard enough. I mean, an, an hour, five times a day is hard enough, uh, let alone once an hour. I think it's, it's, it's really great. It's amazing if you, can, if you can do that. And then twice an hour. Now, one thing I'll say before, before I run out of time here is be, <laughs> be aware of not blaming or punishing yourself when you forget to do your awareness practice. Like maybe that's one of the first things we need to practice is self-forgiveness and the practice of, ah, oh, that's right. I have forgotten for the last five hours or two hours or whatever. I, I've forgotten it. Okay, good. I'm so glad that I've remembered now and I'm returning again. I'm returning again with a smile and with gratitude that I've given, been given the grace to remember at this moment. So, anyway, 
I hope this is inspiring or helpful in some way. I look forward to seeing if you decide to take this on. And with that, thank you for joining me on this journey. I wish you well.